Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Armourer's Bench. A week or two ago, I was at the Antique Arms Show in Las Vegas and got the chance to handle an extremely rare weapon, a suppressed Sten Mark IV. The Mark IV is the missing link between the most utilitarian Sten, the Mark III, and the final iteration, the wooden-stocked Mark V. Very little is known about the Mark IV's development, and more archival research is desperately needed. The weapon was on display at the Morphe Auctions booth. While they couldn't disclose which collection it was on consignment from, they noted it was believed to have been brought home by what they described as a US commando after the end of the Second World War. Not the clearest provenance, but more might be explained in the auction catalogue when it publishes in a couple of months' time. There are several variants of the Mark IV, what have become known as the Mark IV-A and Mark IV-B. This weapon is one of three examples of a suppressed Mark IV-A, with the others in the collection of the Royal Armouries. The Royal Armouries also has suppressed examples of both the Mark IV-A and the Mark IV-B. This photo is of one of their unsuppressed Mark IV-As. Sadly, I couldn't find any decent resolution photographs of the Mark IV-B, but as you can see, its pistol grip and trigger assembly has been moved forward significantly. The gun appears to have been built using a Sten Mark II receiver, and its magazine housing is marked as such. Interestingly, it doesn't have a Mark II serial number. Instead, it's simply marked 3. This is similar to one of the Mark IVs held by the Royal Armouries. The trigger mechanism has been moved forward about an inch, 2.5 centimetres, and unlike other patterns of Sten, it has a large Colweather trigger guard for use with gloves. The unsuppressed Mark IV-A has a 3.5 inch barrel tipped with a conical flash hider. However, this example is suppressed with what Peter Laidler in his Sten book mentions is an MGD 3748 silencer designed by the Armament Design Department, similar to that used on the Mark II S and the Sten Mark VI. One of the most interesting differences is the shorter cocking handle slot in the receiver and the different design of cocking handle. The gun's cocking handle is designed to be rotated 90 degrees to lock the bolt in the forward position. This is a departure from the earlier locking method of pushing the cocking handle down to lock into a hole on the opposite side of the receiver. Sadly, I wasn't able to get video of me demonstrating the locking of the cocking handle. The weapon's other most distinguishing feature is its folding stock. The design is shared by both the A and B variants and is made up of a thick steel bar which pivots. The pivot point is in line with the front of the pistol grip. To deploy or fold the stock, a small spring-loaded catch is pulled towards the butt. This allows the stock to be pivoted through 180 degrees to the left. While the catch locks positively, if the small coil spring which provides tension was damaged, the stock would unlock, making it difficult to use. The coil spring is also exposed, which could allow it to snag on things or become clogged with dirt and mud. But who was the Mark IV designed for? According to F.W.A. Hobart's book on submachine guns, the Mark IVs were developed for airborne forces. Prior to this, paratroops had typically dropped with the stock removed from their stents, which means they weren't able to use them as soon as they hit the ground. The weapons had to be reassembled. And although this was a relatively quick and simple operation, it was perhaps thought that a folding stock would be a better solution. Hobart suggests that the Mark IV guns were abandoned because they didn't fare too well in trials, due to a high, uncontrollable rate of fire. Whatever the reason, they never entered service, and only a handful of prototypes were made. I'm hoping that in the near future I'll have a chance to take a look at some other variants of the Mark IV, and also do some archival research. Thank you to Morphe Auctions for letting me take a look at this Mark IV. It's set to be on sale at their upcoming firearms auction in April. One thing I'm looking forward to doing this year is doing some more archival research into the surviving records regarding the Sten and hopefully uncovering more on the Mark IV, while also continuing the Sten series that I began last year. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider supporting us either via Patreon or YouTube memberships where there's a range of various packs available, including early access to all of our videos. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time.